Wow. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I've been fooling around with uh, my Ecamm Live, and somehow uh, now I think every time I uh, do something, it's going to switch. And my question is, uh, I hope we're not going through the same thing we went through last week, uh, which is for some reason I was streaming not to my own uh, page. And... Uh, is it not doing that now? This is not, doesn't look like it's working. Oh boy, this is crazy. This is insane. Ah, uh, if you are there, put a comment in and you're not there because, oh man. We're gonna start again uh, and uh, Oh, it is going. Fantastic. Uh, well, for some reason, I'm not seeing any comments, but it uh, looks like uh, we are here. Um, and let's see. All comments. I don't know why the comments aren't showing up, but... Uh, <sighs> well, we'll just go. Anyway, Dave Fenoy here. Welcome to another kind of discombobulated Ask Dave Fenoy Anything. Uh, had technical difficulties last week, couldn't broadcast at all. Apparently, I am broadcasting now. Uh, just sans uh, comments, which, of course, uh, I don't like. That's part of why we're doing it here. Um, and let's see if I put a comment in. Da, 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 just a little something there. Did that show up? Uh, anyway, uh, so I know it's it's going out. And wow, that comment showed up. That comment showed up. Maybe I'm the only one that can make comments uh, for myself. Anyway, uh, moving on. Um, I've got a guest today who um, hails from Dallas and uh, specializes uh, in anime and cartoons and video games. And I am going to bring her right on now, ladies and gentlemen. Miss Morgan Berry, how are you? Hi, and, uh, I'm doing good. Thank oh, you there you go. Me. There's go. Oh, now, oh, now I can't hear. Uh, <laughs> I have a. I don't know why my uh, eCam Live. I don't think it's broadcasting, but it is recording. Okay. Uh, so people will be able to get the playback, and it, it will be uh, on YouTube later on. So, Morgan, it's just you and I. Uh, All right. So, I've got a lot of questions for you now. I have noticed you in my Facebook feed uh, for a while, and the business has gotten big enough that uh, you can't keep track of everybody. When I got into this business back in 1990 uh, in Los Angeles, um, there were a handful of people who were making their living doing voiceover. When I mean a handful, maybe, maybe 100, 200 in L.A., uh, now I'm sure it's three or four thousand in LA and then across the country because uh, the internet has made everything accessible. So uh, if someone were to ask me today, do I need to move to Los Angeles? I'd say no, but you didn't start here. How did you get started in this biz? I got started in Texas. Uh, I've been acting for about 17 years now um, and I started both on stage and a little bit of on camera. And I stumbled into voiceover specifically after winning a voice acting competition. Whoa, where was the voice acting competition? Yeah, it was in Frisco, Texas at a convention called Habercon. It was run by Todd Habercorn. <laughs> and yeah, the prize, if you won the competition, was an audition at Funimation. And I won. And that's how I got my first ever voiceover voiceover gig. Wow. And I, um, I, I, I thought I was going to have to scold you a little bit because when you said Frisco, I used to live up in the Bay Area. And the last thing anybody from San Francisco wants to hear is you call San Francisco Frisco. Oh, boy, they just get yeah, crazy. No, Frisco, Texas. But no, it's Frisco, <laughs> Texas. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Wow. So... It was just an audition that you wanted Funimation, and mm -hmm. clearly so you you won. A guarantee, you know. There wasn't even. I won a chance to audition. I auditioned, 
And that wasn't, you know, a guarantee that it would go anywhere, but I'm glad that it did. I started receiving more auditions for them, from them, started booking. I got my first lead role maybe about five months into me doing voiceover. So that was really exciting. Um, and I loved anime. I've been a longtime anime fan since I was a kid. And I love acting. So to be able to pair the two is a, is it's a lot of fun. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you a question that I kind of have the answer to for myself. Um, for me, anime is kind of a hybrid art. Uh, there's a certain amount of acting. There's a certain amount of the organic, but then there's the technical. Um, how do you feel about that? How do you uh, meld the two? the organic and the technical, the being the actor that you are, but matching the lip flap or the time of the Japanese or Korean uh, actor that you're replacing? Yes. So it's a team effort. The script writers write the script to where it matches the mouth flaps, the animated mouth flaps. So each syllable in the script should match a flap. So the script writers definitely help us to match those flaps. And of course, the audio engineer is able to shrink audio or stretch audio if they need to in order to fit just right. But if they do it too much, there's something that there's artifacting that happens and they yeah. don't want that to happen. So sometimes they'll have us do it again. There have been many moments where the director loved the read I gave. They were like, oh, yes, that's the one. Perfect. Beautiful. Did it fit? They look over. No! I know, very dramatic moment where we're just waiting. We're like, oh, that was a perfect take, perfect take. But did it fit? And the engineer just has to look over and go, hmm, I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's a very dramatic moment. And then the director has to be like, okay, so first sentence, got to go quicker. Se second sentence, a little slower. Third, third sentence, got to go quick in the beginning, but slower in the, laugh, in, the, in the back half. So it's a lot of playing around in order to make sure that it fits the animation. But... Uh, yeah, there are a lot of moments where we're just like, oh, man, that was such a good take, but we can't use it. And then we have to do it again. But do you feel do you feel like uh, do you feel like having to match the lip flap and time uh, affects your acting? Sometimes, yes, because I like to take my time. I, you know, there's um, it, there's not a lot of freedom to play with the timing or speed of your reads as an actor when you have to fit such a specific time frame. So if it was prelay, I would be able to take my time and milk the scene. But if it's anime, I have to pay very close attention to the notes within the script. It, are there three periods or just two? You know, is it, is it a small hitch or is it a longer pause? I have to know exactly how long I'm supposed to pause in between certain sentences. Yeah, every detail matters. Uh, you know, it's interesting. Uh, I had a gig, uh, was that this week or last week? It's all such a blur, I can't remember. Uh, but it was uh, a kind of an anime thing. I don't. Is it okay that uh, I'm calling it anime, but this was Korean as opposed to Japanese? Um, um, maybe there's another term when it's Korean, but eh, it felt like anime. Uh, but one of the biggest issues, I think, is uh, how many words it takes to say something in one language uh, and another. And uh, you find uh, the writer sometimes, uh, you've said what you've got to say and you've got another second or two, or you've said what you've got to say and you're over by a second or two. Uh, it has to be one of the most dis difficult jobs to rewrite uh, translate something from Japanese or Korean and nowadays because of so many shows around the world that are becoming hits and and our hunger for uh, various forms of entertainment uh, all kinds of languages are being translated into all kinds of languages yep it's pretty incredible yeah so listen uh, I I see I could tell you know when you, you came on I said oh man she She's got one of those new booths. Uh, she's got, stu <laughs> yeah, she's nice. got studio bricks. I'm still stuck with my old whisper room. I've had that thing. I bought it used, and I've had it for 10 years. Uh, <laughs> how, how long have you had your, your studio bricks? Ooh, um, I think about six months. Oh, okay, okay. 
Uh, and uh, by the way, uh, for those who are listening, whenever you get a chance to listen, uh, you don't get a whisper room, a studio bricks, a vocal booth until you really are doing this career. Uh, as with any other business, you should invest in your career. You know, first it's coming out of your pocket, but let your business buy your booth. And it says to me, Morgan, that you've been doing very well, uh, <laughs> that you could uh, purchase that booth. But let's let's talk a little bit about uh, the rest of your equipment. What kind of microphone is that in the in the? This is a TLM 103 Neumann microphone. Oh, okay. And I love it. It's my favorite. And <laughs> the thing is, um, they use these at Funimation. And it's a lot of the times when I, I get uh, an, an audition through my email, the specs will say, we want, we want a TLM 103 Neumann or similar to that quality. We want you to have this kind of mic or similar. And so I was like, well, that's perfect. I already have that one. So... <laughs> It works well, out. You, you know what? That is one of the most popular mics in the world. And uh, when people talk about microphones, I know the entry level microphones, the Rode NT1. Uh, I'm a fan of the SE 2200A. There, and there's some other uh, really good ones that are in that three, four hundred dollar range, mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes a little less. Uh, but that microphone uh, is one of the best in the world. Uh, I would choose it over a U87. Uh, it's more versatile. The U87, wonderful mic, has the same capsule, in fact. But uh, the U87 lights a big room. And if you try to put it in a, a small booth, it, it just doesn't give you what you think it should give you. That mic ah, works every time. Yeah, I've got, uh, I've got one in my booth. I usually use my 416, I think, came, because I came out of uh, uh, doing mostly promos and commercials first. Yeah. Uh, and I, I know how to use it, but uh, that's not a bad mic. So what's your interface? An Apollo twin. <laughs> oh, I'm in the Apollo uh, family, too. It, was this hey. your first interface, or, or uh, what did you have before? No, I actually started with a Focusrite 2i2. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's interesting because I tell people getting in the business when they're trying to put their studios together uh, that the first thing they should get, they should look toward uh, uh, the, the, the UA Apollo family, but start with the focus right. It's, it's yes. a good deal for the money, and it's a really good little interface. Mm -hmm. So uh, what, kind, what kind of plugins and whatnot do you use? What, what do you use? What's your chain like? You know, I don't use any plugins, actually. I just kind of, I don't know, I try to keep it simple, and I send all of my audio raw, so I don't really, I mean, that's what they requested a lot of the times. They want the audio to be raw, and so I don't really add anything to it. I'm just like, here you go. <laughs> yeah. So how long have you had a home studio? Ooh, um, since I started doing voiceover, so about eight years now. About eight years now. So well, actually, now, you know what? I did singing before, so longer than that, maybe ten years, because I was a a singer mainly before I started voiceover. So about ten years now, I'd say. And, and how tech savvy are you? Mm, enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know the feeling. <laughs> uh, a, a lot of people, uh, it's one of the toughest things now to get into the business. When I got in, uh, in 1990, the home studio was just for some wealthy musicians. Um, and you went to your agents to audition. You went to somebody's studio to work. Um, now, fairly quickly, because I was doing TV promos, uh, I ended up with a home studio because of ISDN, which they've announced now that next year it's going bye-bye. Um, yeah, ISDN is about to become a thing of the past. Uh, what the phone companies have been doing is when somebody was in the ISDN crew, when they retired, they didn't replace them. Uh, and the prices to have ISDN now have just gone up. And up and up. I left it about a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago, when I got a monthly bill that went from 150 bucks a month to 800 bucks a month. And I went, you know what? Uh, I think Source Connect, Connection Open, uh, Ip Diddle, uh, I'll just go with that. Yeah. <laughs> what? 
That's 800. 800. So, so what's your connection to the world? Um, Source Connect. Yeah. 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 I've okay. been using that for everything, all of my sessions, and not even Source Connect Standard. I've been, they've been asking for Source Connect now, which is free. So that's what I've been using for a year and a half now. Well, I keep seeing, though, that uh, often with the Source Connect now, mm -hmm. I've, se I've seen where they say, no, we don't want that. We want the mm -hmm. standard. So you, you might have to upgrade. Might... Oh, yeah. And I'm ready for that when that time comes. But for a lot of the anime and video games, they've, they've been okay with Source Connect now. And, and I was like, oh, okay, cool. And, of course, it's not perfect. Source Connect now, every once in a while, there's an audio blip, and we have to re-record some of the takes. But overall... It's, it's been working for us, so that's good. So now you started your career in Dallas. You got that audition. What won that audition uh, that was your prize? I've got an audition at Funimation. So did you did you book that? I, um, not the first audition that I booked with Funimation. I think it ended up being the second one, though. And I, my first gig ever at Funimation was additional voices for Fairy Tale which was one of my favorite anime shows. So that was, that was cool. And then I booked my first, my first named role uh, as Linda in Hyper Dimension Neptunia, the animation. And then my first lead role as Tokaku Azuma in Riddle Story of Devil. And uh, wait, say that, that name was... again. Hmm? Say that name again. Riddle Story of Devil? No, 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 the character. Oh, uh, Tokaku Azuma. Okay, five times as fast as you can. No, kidding, kidding, okay. kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's one thing about anime are those Japanese names and but it's it's huge it's huge it's huge now one of the things I've noticed about anime it doesn't tend to pay as much oh. as animation but there is a plus side and uh, that's conventions yep yes yep. it is that's what uh that's what pays the bills is the convention appearances because anime doesn't pay well and funny enough union anime for the longest time paid less than non-union anime what yep wow mm -hmm. wow 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 yep i've done a fair amount of anime but it i've done union anime that apparently uh they didn't know about the cheap contracts uh, uh, uh bayonetta i play rodin and bayonetta and uh they made it into a movie and, 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 and that kind of thing. So that actually has uh, been very, very good to me. But, nice. uh, but what, what happened with this last year and the conventions were gone? How, how did that affect you financially? Um, you know, I, I still had voiceover work coming in and I, I'm also a singer, and so I have some music streaming, and so I was still okay financially. I was still set, you know, I was booking, I was working, but it just wasn't as much as the previous year, unfortunately, because yeah. convention appearances is what really um, helps. I, I, I think the anime fans are more fanatic than almost any other fans. Uh, when I've gone to conventions and, uh, you know, I'm got big video games and cartoons and the person a couple tables down um, has anime that uh, and I I'm not a big anime person uh, and I'm like well how come their line never stops <laughs> yeah it's amazing how and uh, the number of people who will dress up as these characters um, doing the cosplay and it's just enjoy the first convention I went to where I saw that I was kind of uh Okay, what's going on here? But you know what? It's okay that people get in touch with their inner child and they ain't hurting anybody, so right. more power to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So do you ever uh, dress up in costume? I did once, but it was expensive, so I stopped. <laughs> yeah, I was... it's, it's It's a big commitment, and the, the wig is itchy, and it's just... It's it, it became kind of difficult, so I stopped. But it was fun. I love conventions, but now I I admire the cosplay from afar. Now I instead of cosplaying for myself, I like watching, seeing other people's creations. I I love conventions so much. They're so much fun. 
Ah, there you go. There you go. Uh, well, I love going to them, too. I love meeting the fans. Um, and you meet all kinds of people. And I, for me, it's kind of a lesson in uh, humanity. Uh, a long time ago, I was uh, being a booth announcer, and I, I met some of my heroes uh, from bands and actors and whatnot, and uh, turns out some of my heroes weren't the one, most wonderful people in the world. It was a big lesson to me that uh, if somebody comes to spend a little time to meet you, greet you, say hello, let you know how much your work meant to them, uh, they at least deserve a smile. Right. At the very least. Um, so so now, what, what kind of fan, what's the weirdest thing that's happened to you with fans? Weirdest thing? Hmm. Or most touching thing? Oh, well, okay, the most touching. Um, so I'm a huge nerd. I, I'm a fellow fan of anime and, you know, cartoons, video games. And one of my obsessions is Voltron. And a lot of my fans know this. And so there were some fans who came in cosplay as the characters from Voltron. And they came to my autograph table. And here's the thing. I'm very, I am, I wrote a song, a parody song, because I'm a nerd, guys. I love Voltron. I'm obsessed. And so I wrote a parody song. And these fans came up to the table, put on the song, choreo choreographed a dance to it, and in cosplay, did the dance for me right in front of my, my table. Oh, wow. Sing along. Oh. Yeah, and it was just the sweetest thing. Very touching. I will never forget that. There you go. There you go. So, so tell me some of, the, uh, some of the big games, anime, uh, cartoons that you've been a part of. How did they come to be? Uh, have you hit that point yet where people just, oh, no, I'd like Morgan Berry. Oh, um, I think at least maybe once or twice. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I, I voice in a lot of different franchises. Um, Pokemon, Dragon Ball, Beyblade, Final Fantasy, Fire Emblem, Miraculous Ladybug, Borderlands, Sword Art Online, My Hero Academia. Oh my gosh, I remember um, when I got cast in that one because I was a huge fan of the series and then getting cast in it, I was like, no way, that's awesome. Cool moment for me. Um, Inuyasha. There's just, um, I'm really blessed to be a part of a lot of the content that I consume as a fan. Oh, yeah. Well, let me ask you this. Do you ever have imposter syndrome? Do you ever feel like, gee, I, I'm, I'm not really that good and, and they're going to find out one day and, and well, I don't know why they keep hiring me. I'm fooling them. Do you, ever, do you ever have any of those feelings? A lot of actors do. Honestly, in the beginning, I did. But the more I train... And, and I, you know, I get training and coaching as much as I can because I want to stay in tune with the trends of the, of the, you know, the, the VO market, the industry is always changing. And so I consistently get coaching and train and, and work and experience is always, you know, a great work, teacher. Work is, a, work is a, an incredible trainer, but I, I agree with you that um, you should never get to that point where you think you're so wonderful that uh, you can't learn something. So who have been some of the teachers you've enjoyed the most? Oh, um, Richard Horvitz. I love Richard. Yeah, he's awesome. Debbie Derryberry. I love her too. A lot of fun. Um, Aaron Fitzgerald. Oh uh -huh. my goodness. I, um, gosh, there's it, her passion for, for voiceover is just so evident in the way she speaks and everything she says, and I love that passion. Um, Phil Bach. Um, gosh, there's been so many, and I even took a looping class with Terry Douglas. Um, it's been a ton. Like, oof, I, it's a lot. Like, oh, gosh. and you know, it's 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 interesting because uh, the people who I see have successful careers aren't just talented, uh, but they're talented and they take classes and private lessons and they stretch themselves. And um, I remember being at a party once and somebody, a guy was talking to, oh, you do voiceover work. I, I took a voiceover class once. And uh, he went on to brag about not listening to any of the reads he had done 
uh, because he did, felt like he didn't need to. And I, I did the Hollywood thing, you know, where they're looking at you and then suddenly they're looking, oh, uh, uh, bye-bye. Uh, <laughs> like, oh, okay, bye. <laughs> uh, you know, because the world, the world changes so fast and the reads yes. change and yes. who we believe changes. Uh, and uh, the generation behind you, and actually it shouldn't even be the generation, it's the 10 years behind you speaks yeah. different than you did. And the 10 years under them, different than they did. And the 10 years under them. And if you are going to stay current, mm -hmm. you've got yep. to study that. You've got to study yeah. that. It's true. So, so when did you know you, uh, you had some acting talent? Uh, well, I mean, I've been doing this for 17 years. And I just, uh, I did it because it was fun. It was a great escape. And... You know, in the beginning, I yeah, everyone's got to start somewhere. And sometimes the theater teacher has their favorites. So I, you know, yeah, you know how it is, right? And, you know, middle, middle school, um, things were good. And then high school came around and ensemble, ensemble. I'm like, okay, you're casting the same people as the leads over and over again. That's getting a little boring, you know, but what can you do? They have their favorites. And so, you know, I did what I could, but... You know, when that kept going on, I was just like, you know what? I'm going to branch out outside of my school's theater department. And so I did. And that's when I really started um, taking off um, on stage. I booked leads and here and there and way more than I did when I was in my school's theater department. Because so in your school's theater department, uh, any of those people that uh, were booking all those leads, are they, do you know of them working now? I know of one of them, and I've seen him book every once in a while, voiceover, um, with voiceover roles. But other than that, no. not seeing him on television or movies. No, of I'm not seeing any of them on television. Ah, <laughs> uh, success is the best revenge. It's true. <laughs> so now, if what would be the ultimate job for you right now, if you could just play any character, be a part of any, uh, and you've been a part of some really uh, great properties, what uh, would really do you want to sink your teeth into? Ooh. I mean, I, in all honesty, when I booked Pokemon, I was just like, because I love Pokemon. That's been my dream since I was a kid, my my first love, you know? And so when I booked, th booked that, I was just like, I'm set for life, not financially, but set for life, you know, my heart, made my heart happy. But um, so if I were to think of a specific title that I would like to be a part of now, one that I'm not already in, I would say Voltron, but that okay. series ended, unfortunately. So maybe Well, you know what? Uh, what's old becomes new again. Yeah, Wouldn't yeah. be surprised if Voltron. I'm surprised at uh, the number of uh, Spider Mans we've had and Supermans that we've had. And, That's true. You know, <laughs> they keep coming back. Uh, so, and and you've had some work in the Marvel universe. Speaking of yeah. superheroes, wh who did you play? I voiced for Silver Sable in Marvel Avengers Academy, and um, yeah, that was an interesting. Um, an interesting gig because I did not think I would book it. I really didn't. But sometimes that happens. You you do your best and you're like, well, let, well I'm not going to, you know, you really think to yourself, I'm not going to get it, but at least I tried. And then you get it and it's just mind blowing. And that, that was definitely an imposter syndrome moment for me. I was just like, nah, -uh. no. Well, you know, the, the world often looks at you differently than you look at yourself. And sometimes you have to come to the realization that the world likes you better than you think they do. Uh, the world the world recognizes a talent that perhaps you didn't recognize in yourself. I, you, you recognize it somewhat, but you know we ca we get kind of used to ourselves. You know we don't think we're as, as good looking as as we may be as the world may see us because we look and oh there I am again, yeah, me in the mirror. Right. Uh, there it is, uh, and the world can look at us differently. Um, so what do you do with social media? What, uh, what platforms are you on? How do you use them and how do they work for you? I'm on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. 
And it's um, at the Morgan Berry on all of those platforms. The Morgan Berry. And was there another Morgan Berry out there that you had to get beyond? Well, funny enough, yeah, there there's so many Morgan Berries out there. Apparently, it's a very common name. And so Morgan Berry was taken, and official Morgan Berry was too long. So I was like, okay, the Morgan Berry works, but also it's it's also a play on words. The Morgan Berry. If you say it differently, just slightly, the Morgan Berry. I'm not a strawberry. I'm a Morgan Berry. Oh, okay. And and I also notice Morgan Raspberry. Oh yeah, I I use that on Facebook to avoid <coughs> avoid uh, friend requests from people I don't know. <laughs> ah, there you go. There you go. Which happens all the time. It's it's funny. Um, I my Facebook is mostly for other voiceover people and friends and family, uh, but sometimes you end up with people there that you really don't want to have on there. Exactly. There are some people I need to avoid, so I kind of do that on Facebook so I can stay away from that crazy side of Facebook. You know, you know it's funny, and I, I don't know why I just thought of this. Um, there are people who try to get to you on Facebook, uh, and, and as a guy, it it's probably not nearly as um, disturbing uh, but I imagine as an attractive woman, there are people out there that get obsessed and so forth. And, uh, hi, Morgan, how are you? I, I love your work. And I was hoping I could take you to de the, those kinds of things. Oh, Do you I run into that? that. Mm -hmm. I, I have a story. I don't know if it's inappropriate for oh, nope. this Dish. video. But, um, I was on Instagram. Someone slid in my DMs. And you know what? They were really nice. Now, here's the thing about Instagram DMs. They don't see that you've seen the message unless you respond, unless you give them that permission. And so this guy, he was really sweet. He was like, hey, I'm a huge fan of your work. I love your, your voice and such and such. He was very sweet. And so I wanted to thank him. So I just responded. Normally, I would just ignore a message. But he, it was a really sweet message. And so I responded and said, thank you. I really appreciate that, you know. And then once you message once, that's when it opens up the chat for them to continue to message you. Hmm. So he took that opportunity. The next day he said, hey, so I've never asked a celebrity this, but can I see your feet? <laughs> can you, can you send me pictures? Can you send me pictures of your feet? And I was just like, oh, we're done. <laughs> so I blocked him right then and there. Uh, so are your feet uh, particularly spectacular? Nah, I think they're average. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, it takes all kinds to make the world go round. Yeah. Um, oh, I had another question for you, and I can't remember. So if you were going to do anything different in your career now, what's the one thing you, you'd, you'd change uh, about where you are and what you're doing? One thing I would change. Hmm. Take more risks, I guess. Ah. And what, what kind of risks would you take? Um, in in your auditions? Uh, my auditions, yeah. yeah. And even just auditioning. There, there are some roles that now when I look back on it, I think to myself, oh, I should have just gone for it. I think I, I, I probably could have done a better job than I thought at that time. There were th some uh, roles I didn't audition for because I thought to myself, oh, no, I can't do that. No, they're not going to, no. You know, it's but funny. Uh, there are a few roles like that that I didn't audition for. I'm saying, oh, you know, I'm, I'm more an adventure voice. I don't do as much zany, wacky comedy. Uh, but uh, I'll, I'll give it the old college try and book them and book several yeah. of those. Uh, right. So... Sometimes you just don't know. Sometimes uh, you just have to give yourself to it uh, right. and and let it go. Let me ask mm -hmm. you this. Have you been haunted by any auditions that you really, really let yourself want and didn't get? Ooh, you know, it's funny. I'm sure years ago I would have been able to tell you uh, some of those roles that I really wanted that I didn't get, but I've gotten, I've kind of trained myself to forget. 
And so I can't think of any right now. I, I had to train myself to not grow attached to these characters because it'll kill you, you know? It, oh, and I don't want it to strip me away. I don't want it to, to strip away my happiness when I don't book something. So I've kind of had to train myself over the past few years to audition and forget. Because I, I used to get hung up on... Um, on those roles that I didn't book. And there were quite a few that I was just like, oh, I really wanted that. But yeah, it's the, just the job. We audition and hope we book. Uh, you know, it's funny when I'm, I'm talking to uh, civilian friends of mine uh, and you know, the casual conversation, oh, so what are you doing? Oh yeah, I'm working on an audition, da, 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 blah, blah, blah. And uh, then you'll talk to them a week or two. So how'd the audition go? And I'm like, uh, which audition? We were talking last week. You had an audition. Oh, uh, I have a standard answer now. If I book it, it went great. Uh, but that's just a little bit of of what we have to do to maintain sanity. Yes. Uh, and live in the things we did book. L live in our successes as opposed to those things we wanted. Somebody else got it. I exactly. could have been on that part. I could have been in that cartoon. And because uh, that that's that's a one way street to misery land. Yes, it is. Yep. So if you had a message for uh, somebody knocking on the voiceover doors now that wanted to. Uh, uh, a, a young Morgan Berry, um, what would you say to them? Oh, um, the business side of voiceover is important, but don't focus too much on it. Just have fun. This industry, you know, this art is fun. The industry itself can kind of eat you alive sometimes, but, um, but just remember to have fun with it. How, how, do, how is the industry eating you alive a little bit? What do you mean by well, that? Well, especially in the beginning, um, there's always the, like, you know, with imposter syndrome and auditioning and auditioning and letting it get to you when you don't book. And, but here's the thing, everyone's got to start somewhere. And that's, that's show business, baby. You know, you audition and when you book, it's great. But when you don't book, sometimes you're, you know, wondering how am I going to afford rent? And sometimes I, in the beginning of my career, I really let that get to me and it, uh, you know, started questioning, questioning, like, like, I feel like this is what I'm meant for, like, you know, and I love what I do, but what if, what if it's not, you know, what if I'm wrong, you know, questioning myself. Do you but, still question well, yourself? No, I'm very confident in who I am and in what I do. And as long as I love what I do and am doing my damn best, that's all I can do. And, and as long as you're, you're booking. Now, I, <laughs> you've, you've been at this a while. I've been doing this, this God, it's over 30 years now. Jeez. Um, and the one, one of the things I've learned is uh, it's peaks and valleys. Yes. Uh, and you, you can't, every job you have, somebody had before you and somebody will have after you, unless you're the first one to play that character. Um. And I know at one point, uh, I, I remember 2008, the economy crashed. My two biggest clients went out of business. Um, I was upside down in my house. I borrowed a bunch of money to you know, send kids to school and that kind of stuff. And uh, I had to sell my house, make no money, move into a condo for a little while. And I thought, well, maybe it's time to do something else. Uh, but what I learned, and I'm kind of telling you this story and for you and for other people, um, that what I did was go back to the basics of how I started. I started self-promoting. I learned about social media and doing yeah. and using it. Uh, and a lot of guys and gals in my age group who have been doing things for a long time expect the world not to change, but the change is the only constant yeah. uh so even if you can't quite keep up you got to run as fast as you can uh to keep from falling too far behind that's true yeah the trends are always changing and we got to keep up with them yeah so what are your hobbies oh hobbies you know i get this question a lot and i'm a i'll admit i'm a bit of a workaholic i love work so 
Before, when people would ask me that question, I would say, I don't have a hobby. I mean, if, I, if anything, I'm watching Netflix, but for the most part, I'm always working, whether it's voiceover or singing, I'm always working on something. But I did take the time to find little hobbies here and there. I, I play video games. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure that's a hobby anymore. <laughs> well, you could be, you could go pro. That okay, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> but um, you know, it's a break from working in video games. Uh, I, I play Skyrim. I love Skyrim. That's another game I would love to be in one day. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I, I play some playing... of the characters in Skyrim. He's in Khajiit, <laughs> in plenty of Khajiit. And a bunch of other different characters in that. Love, love that oh, game. I love that. Yeah. Oh, it's so much fun. I love role-playing games. And The Witcher 3 is another one I started playing. And, yeah. I haven't played so that. I well, I, I actually am not a gamer. Uh, I don't play them, but I do watch game play. Oh, yeah. Let's play I, for the For the entertainment value and to, to understand what's going on in the business. Uh, but... Uh, Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I, I just don't have time to do that. So uh, where do you want to be 10 years from now? Oh, that's a, that's a big question. I... Mm. I just knew you were going to say, right here in this booth, doing... <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, basically, I mean, I love, I love what I do, and I want to keep doing it for as long as I can. So I hope by then, 10 years from now, I'm still doing this, um, able to pay rent continually. Um, Maybe even buy a house. Right, Ex that is one of my personal goals. LA is pretty crazy, but I do wanna eventually get a house out here, that'd be great. And, you know, direct, I wanna, I wanna direct and cast eventually in the future. Um, okay. For, yeah. So uh, you, you run into that, that young Morgan Berry, and she's uh, asking you, "How can I? How can I be you? What What do you tell her? What What are the What are the steps? What's the mindset? Uh, what is What does she need to know uh, to follow in your footsteps?" I mean, what I usually tell everybody is train with someone who knows the business. Train training, acting lessons, classes, theater. Uh, growing in the arts, that's what I tell everybody, but it's also important to choose your coaches wi wisely because there's so many scams out there uh, yeah, from true. people who don't actually work in the professional industry. Like you, you Google them and nothing comes up. So it's um, important to know who you're learning from as well. So yeah, learn from the best. If you want to be the best, learn from the best. And, and I'm, I'm so glad to hear that. Uh... Because so many people that I, uh, well, not that I'm running into them that much anymore, but there was a time uh, before this industry got as big as it is. Uh, the internet has changed the world and definitely our industry. And there's so many f areas of it that you can do voiceover in now. But uh, I would talk to people that did not want to take classes uh, did not want to take private lessons because they felt like it was a scam. It's just talking. I'm just reading. Um, and they felt like if I have a beautiful voice and I can come up with a song to sing while I'm doing that, that thing, that uh, somehow that is going to be what makes the difference for them. And it so is not, um, you know, if you're going to be an actor, you got to be an actor. Yeah, and it's ultimately you have to perform those voices that you say you have. You know, there's so many people out there that are like, "Well, I can do impressions, and I've got loads of voices." And I'm like, "Okay, but can you act? Can you perform those voices? And can you take direction well?" Yeah. That's can important. you can you do those voices in the words somebody else gave you, mm. with the motivation somebody else gave that voice? Yep. That's a biggie. That's a biggie. Yeah. Give them different context, different location, different environment, keywords, and see what they can do with it. And if 
it's the same read every time. Uh. <laughs> and I've, I've had that student from time to time. Uh, no, say it like this. And there it is again. And there it is again. And there it is again. Uh, if you ran across a student like that, I know what I tell them. How would you tell somebody to, how can they change up their read? What would they have to do to change uh, the mo to change a read from what they're doing to something else? A lot of the times I... I like doing the ABCs. I say, hey, all right, give me an ABC. Give me three takes of that, and each take, same voice, different way to read it. There are so many different ways you could change up a read, whether it's change the emphasis that you put on a word, or change the speed of one sentence, uh, change the volume of one sentence. Maybe, maybe this line, you're not just talking to the person in front of you. Maybe another part of the line, you're talking to yourself. Maybe you're whispering that part to yourself. And then the next part, you say it out loud. There's so many different ways you could switch it up and add pre-life, add, you know, ad lib, add a little unscripted chuckle here and there if it fits the scene. There's so many different ways to make yourself stand out in that character. And yeah, I just, um, so a lot of the times I'll give those suggestions and be like, hey, try doing this. Maybe change the speed here. Oh, maybe change your volume here. Change the emotion here because, you know, have a build in your anger over here. You know, you know just, uh, it's interesting. You've given, you've given me a mix of the technical and the organic. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I, I, I tend to want to lean into the organic as opposed to the technical. Mm -hmm. uh, and what I would usually say to people is, Change the scenario. This person mm -hmm. you're talking to, how do you feel about them? Change how you feel about them. Yeah. Uh, are you standing? Are you sitting? Are you moving? Uh, what's, what's your inner dialogue? What are you thinking while you're saying this? Yeah. Uh, uh, changing all of those things mm -hmm. without saying, oh, just say it a little faster, say it a little slower. And right. and that, that happens. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes... We Especially are in anime when you have to fit oh, those boy. flaps. <laughs> uh, we are artists, but we are also technicians sometimes just a little faster, a little louder. Uh, oh, no, it's it's five people over there. Uh, oh, no, you're you're fighting. Oh, no, you're running while you're saying this. Right. How many people are you talking to? Do you have to raise your voice? Are you up on a platform or are you right ground level with them? Yeah. Every detail matters. Got to see the scene. Got to be yep. in the scene. Uh, exactly. I, I always believe that... We pay too much attention to the words. Mm -hmm. uh, that it's all the other things that an on-camera or stage actor would have. Uh, memorized script, uh, blocking another actor in costume. Um, yeah. All those things that we take for granted because we're looking at words. Right. And, and script analysis. <laughs> we don't have time to analyze things in the booth because they just the script's right there for the first time we don't really get time to um like we did with on camera or on stage yeah, yeah. but you still have to be in character yep they'll have to know who that gotta character get character. is it's just got to be so quick yeah yeah well you know what i'm i'm disappointed that th this didn't go live because there'd be a lot of great comments and questions uh for you but uh, this will live uh, on my YouTube channel. Ask Dave Fenoy anything. Well, it's it's uh, Dave Fenoy voiceover training, uh, and I'm going to see if it will play afterwards on on Facebook. But I'd, I'd like to get you back when I get this thing working exactly the way it's supposed yeah, to. And it's I would been love working to be great back. for a couple of years, and then last week and this week, uh, well, we're, it's a step forward this week. But uh, uh, I'd love to get you back. Uh, so we can talk more about your work, and I'm sure some of fans of yours, uh, not the guy that wants to see your feet, of course, uh, I'm sure some fans of yours uh, would want to chime in and say hello uh, and let you know what your work has meant to them. Aww. So, Morgan, I just want to say thank you so much. You've thank been you. delightful. I'm, I applaud your success and uh, wish for your continued success. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. See ya. Bye. <laughs> All right, everybody. That Yay! was Morgan Berry. Woohoo! Fantastic. And uh, Dave Fenoy here once again. Uh, this will be living.
Dave Fenoy voiceover training on YouTube. If you're interested in voiceover coaching or finding out where I'll be teaching, uh, visit DaveFenoy.com. Sign up and you'll get uh, reminders about this, that, and the other. And in the meantime, book something. See ya.